Привет всем! Welcome to this review looking at Tacom's T55AM kit in 135th scale and some juicy extras that are part of this new project. Okay, we'll do all the extras a little bit later, especially this one. And moving them inside, let's have a look at this T55AM kit. Came out quite a while ago. These were obviously longly awaited the T55 kits that had a semblance of accuracy. Uh, previously, there wasn't anything in plastic in 35th scale that um, really cut the mustard. Yes, there was the Tamiya kit, the sort of multiple variety version that just was not accurate. But um, when these came out, people were pleased. Yes, it's a dusty box, had this a long time. Anyways, let's crack on, see what's inside. As far as I know, T55AM, upgraded T55, notably armor, LRF, uh, and engine, I believe. So inside here, we, what have we got? We've got some pamphlets, some PE stuff, and let's count the sprues. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yes, it is jam packed. Okay, let's start with the instructions and have a look at the parts in detail as always. Okay, so we've got our usual booklet style instructions from Tacom. We've got a description of the vehicle here. I'll write this out so you can read it in your own time as part of the video description. That's pretty cute, this folds out like so. We've got the parts tree map with all those sprues and also pointing out which extra, you know, the extra detail parts, photo etch parts are included. So, first part is adding on some reinforcement onto the underhull. So, they've obviously got additional armor on these AM style tanks. So, as you drill out some holes, and there's more armor that covers up that uh, escape hatch underneath the hull. Build up the sprues, build up the sprockets rather. Build up the uh, stub axles, torsion bar suspension. Put on the road wheels, road wheels of many parts. Yeah, first of all, they're double wheel construction and also the outer rubber section of the wheel is separate. We'll have a look at that, obviously. And even the hub. So there's even some detail on the uh, on the actual hub inside. Okay, uh, here's a note. It says, compare step 17 before attaching TP32, which is, um, oh yeah, this is part of the cooling for the rear engine here so the engine's mounted at the back they've got a big fan here and if you want to do the cover or otherwise open or closed there's an option there tracks are individual plastic links but we are going to be using an aftermarket solution just going to say as well that this build has been chosen by my Patreon, so if you want to choose builds for me, join the Patreon also as well. I'm not too sure on the format of the build, it will be the next project. Will it be a music video or will I do explanations? There are weekly vlogs, every week I publish a vlog with information on the Patreon, it is Patreon only at the moment. Okay, anyways, family detail goes on. I have, I'm quite familiar with this layout, I have built the Type 69. Uh, when Tacon brought out these tanks, they brought out the whole series. It was really, really welcome. And to get detail into the hull here, all the zip boxes go on, the notable external fuel tanks. We've got the cable here that's provided in metal. There are side skirts, rubber, rubberized side skirts on the T55AM. Here's that step giving you the option here as well uh, that we noted before. Uh, notably as well that they do include the plumbing for the fuel tanks these aren't ancillary fuel tanks these are the vehicle fuel tanks but so they need the plumbing to feed the engine so all that's included it's very fine detailed parts okay we've got an option here as well if you want to mount the 12.7 dushka or otherwise 
drill out holes or not external fuel tanks these ones aren't plumbed in these are basically just barrels of fuel carried externally on the tank and I do a lot of research on T55AM I think there's some really juicy examples out there so it's going to be quite a fun build okay here's the notable cheek armor going on onto the turret here and we're having on lots of the externally mounted equipment they've got the uh, smoke grenades another feature T55AM Luna IR searchlight and also here's the detail of the covering for the mantlet with the LRF mounted on top Disco built gets built up 36.1 quite a few parts and also the 12.7 ammo canisters and then we've got <laughs> I can't believe they do this <laughs> makes me just laugh okay there's the two versions <laughs> right okay so this final step is to put the turret onto the hull and there's one without the MG it was one with the MG one without okay okay just quickly we'll have a look at the paint schemes that are in this little pamphlet uh, notable to point out that the paint references are only ammo of MIG acrylic paints so here we've got a multi camo uh, that's modern Russian flag so obviously Russian service and then we've got Angola now that could be interesting of course there's more interesting options Cuba as well uh, sort of interesting I think there's no markings on them so you wouldn't even be able to guess where it's from there's no uh, water stickers for that but the Angolan one looks kind of interesting and also another Russian army vehicle oh this is Marines it says as well so I thought yeah they've got the this is the box art version that's got the uh, anchor there so uh, let's have a look at the uh, parts quickly I'm not going to show you all of them just too many okay let's uh, run through these parts the sprue trees I'll just show you first of all an overall view of them this one containing the front glasses etc there's that belly armor and what I'll do I'll zoom in later on and we'll uh, have a look at the details see if it's up to scratch got two sprues of thus which are the externally mounted fuel cans the barrel the 100 millimeter barrel is split down the center so you've got the seam to deal with um, this one I think it's got some cladding on it as well but I might have a look in my spares. I may have an aftermarket replacement, not too sure. There's part of the cupola there. Why are there so many of these uh, trees? Well, it's just due to the reason that they brought out maybe five or six variants of the T55. So uh, that's how they captured all the different variants and different sprues. Here are the light guards. We'll have a look at them in detail and compare them to the aftermarket parts as well that I have. Fenders on this sprue and also the anti-ditching log. These are actually not too bad. They're nice and thin and also there's not any KO marks on them. Well, yeah, there is actually. <laughs> That's a total fib. Yes, there's plenty of KO marks on top. Road wheels, we've got absolutely plenty with all the hubs, sprocket details, etc. And also the uh, some of the stub axles. This is the turret cheek armor. This is the generic turret sprue and it's got the other types of cupola on them as well and also the 100mm main gun without the cladding on it. So obviously pay attention to your parts when you build it. This is the biggest um, sprue, again a generic sprue for all the T55s, uh, engine deck and also the turret ring mount, fuel cans etc. yet another version of the cupola and the hatch and here's a 12.7 uh, anti-aircraft machine gun and some ammo cans as well these are the rubberized side skirts for this version of the t55 and we've got four of these which are the outer segment the rubber portion of the road wheels Hero parts. For some reason in my box 
I've got two turrets, they're exactly identical. However, in this one, I've got the flexible rubber uh, cover for the uh, mantlet and also these poly caps as well. Uh, but the actual turrets are absolutely identical. Here are the tracks, individual ones. So this is prior to link and length becoming the sort of de facto thing for uh, Tacon. Transparent optics. Yes, I think it's a must in these kits. Uh, for some reason, Tacon, in some kits, they haven't got transparent optics for the periscopes, etc. But in this kit, we do. Let's go into macro now. Just show you some of the detail. These are side skirts. Just want to show you all these sort of hinges and details like that. Really nicely captured. Also, super thin, which is exactly what it should be. Engine deck, capturing all this detail. Tamiya didn't get this right on their T55s, in particular the uh, the um, deck mounting the plate on which the waterproof kit, the wading kit mounts onto the engine deck. They, they didn't even include it, but um, fortunately with Tacom, they corrected all that stuff. Bit of hatch detail there for you. There's the fuel tanks, nice little weld seams, details, etc. Everything, you know, high quality, exactly what you expect. Front glasses plate with some of this uh, detail. This is part of the, this is the conduit here that holds the, um, the wiring supply for the headlights and also some nice weld detail that's on there. All looks pretty good. Here's the fenders, let's have a look inside them. Yeah, a few KO marks, that's what you'd expect inside there. Also inside this portion, you'd actually have some ribbing there as well. Uh, but it is quite thin and that's quite an easy scratch building exercise if that was really your thing. Here's the rear of the fenders with that rubberized portion here. Just show you, even though we won't be using this version, I think on ours, just want to show you all the nice bolt detail that's captured on this uh, cupola ring here. Um, really well done. And the hatches as well. Nice detail. Distinctive so-called spider road wheels which are really, really good with all the lightning holes, the correct detail, weld marks, etc. And also, as I mentioned as well, they've got the hub there, so you could show them without the hub cap, but that means that the tank is basically not operational as it would lose all its grease through the bed. You know, the, these are obviously the, um, the bearing seals here and they would be exposed to the elements. And here are the hub caps. But you could actually pose it in a maintenance type figuration like that or you know a really badly maintained one but I don't think you'd see one rolling without that cap in place. Let's have a look at these uh, hero parts, the big slide moulds, the lower hull with all these uh, mountings on here all nicely captured. This is perfectly smooth as well there's no texture on this um, but it's rolled steel so in this scale you wouldn't get a texture yeah the texture you're going to get on here is going to be more like weathering and elements so you know you wouldn't expect to see you know overdone stuff like some of these modelers put all sorts of um surfacer and putty and stuff on these parts well have a look at them in real life they're, they're smooth you know they, they don't have that texture however the turret, which is one well, like a casting, has got a very, very subtle. It is in scale. It's so in scale that it's you know you don't see it. It's got the slight deviations in the texture, and that is how that looks in scale. And this is where people, yeah, I mean rightly so, they do accent that you know to give it more of a cast texture. But again, have a look at one in 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 real life and how how they look, yeah. And also the weld as well has been captured really well uh, for these roof plates here. As has all the bolt detail 
around the surrounds of the mantlet as well. Here is the outer section of the rubber portion and um, these are the mold marks that you do see on them but obviously you know after operation you know after the thing's been running for a while all that mold marks get removed from the the contact points of the rubber but so you can sand that down basically there's no seam around there as such but but there is and you know it's up to you how you want it to pick that but fortunately they have captured what you would see which is on the outer face are these little markings around there so well done to them let's have a look at the uh, little detail parts that have been included within the kit now okay so starting off we've got the photo etch fret it's not too big it is really thin really quite easy to cut out these parts and there as i was saying this is the mounting flange for the wading kit that mounts onto the parts of the uh, rear engine deck also notably these uh, fillet parts here that are the fender supports these have been really well done and of course We've got the grating for the engine covers. So that's your only photo etch fret. And I think uh, Tacom, they just really balance it quite well between, you know, not overloading the details and providing sufficient PE so it looks right. We've got supplied metal cables for the recovery wires as well. These are malleable. They do sort of hold their shape, but I have got a solution, a different solution to these. I better point out as well, there's two erratas that are included or attention points. One of them for these bolts that go on the side of the mantlet and also a correction as you assemble the um, part of the running gear there. So just take a note of that. And finally, we've got the water stickers inside here, just this tiny little sheet with some numbers on it you've already seen the markings so that's what you get inside here now let's uh, move on to the aftermarket parts okay so one of the upgrades I'll be using are not Tiger One tracks these are the T55 tracks from Frule model and probably the last time I used these these things I think I think they may even be going out of business been largely replaced by um, 3d printed resin and you know there's no real benefit to them they can be heavy you need to drill drill them out before you can slot them together uh, and also they're expensive as are 3d printed ones but because i've got them i will use them so what advantage is there to these well not much really bar and i should have shown you these these are the supplied individual links from tacom they are excellent they're really good this is before the uh, before they went like link and length and these tracks are excellent. These are different style though of note the uh, Frule ones have got this cut out here for where the drive tooth engages into the track itself so I'll just use these probably for the last time you know, This is one of my favorite brands Eureka that provide a tow cable set for the T55 the wire that's supplied is, it's just slightly better than what is included within the kit. It's, it's malleable again, but uh, it holds its position much better and you'll see that during the build. And also we've got resin, uh, actual eyelets as well. And here's the juiciest upgrade I've got from Mini Arm. I've used Mini Arm many times. I just really, really like their stuff. And they call it the correction set, so it's got some other maybe finer detail and some corrections i'm not too sure technically what's different but in terms of you know detail it's amazing you know um the instructions pretty simple this is before 3d printing this you know 2016 this is dated even tells you like how old the t55 kit is that we'll be building but um we've got the clad gun barrel and also it gets detailed with photo etch and this is the premium part down here i'll show you that let's open this up show you all these parts we've got an absolute stack of resin parts mainly replacing the external fuel tanks these are just a little bit better detailed than the plastic 
We've got the cupola ring again. I think, you know, th this again, just because it's resin, it just holds better detail. But as we saw, the supply tack on, nothing wrong with using that. I just went for the Gucci upgrades because I like them. And here is, I would say this is a lot better, this solution here. Let's open this up. I'm not showing you this properly. I absolutely detest people who don't do reviews uh, without opening the bag. So why am I doing the same? Anyways, yeah, here we are. Much better detailed um, surround to the, the flexible portion of the mantlet cover. It's just absolutely perfectly detailed. And that is going to be really, really great. Let me just show you the kit supplied. This is the kit supplied flexible vinyl. Actually, it is really good as well. But um, yeah, my preference is for the resin, the solid part. Also, just to hold the barrel more firmly. And this, of course, is designed to engage with the supplied aftermarket barrel that's included within this upgrade kit. This is pretty weighty, actually. This is a full like brass barrel. It isn't hollowed out. They've drilled it into it to give it the depth there of a bore it's pretty weighty so the problem comes in counterbalancing the actual turret in some cases so I'll check that out as I go through the build you can see there's quite a lot to this set I've got another photo etch set here as well with sort of details for the uh, you know it's going to be up to me how much I add how much I don't add do I need to remove parts? I'll have a look at details and instruction. All be covered in the uh, the build video. Inside here, this is like the best detail part for me. And it's the uh, replacement for the light guards. This has actually been soldered together from brass parts. It is super thin. Uh, I've seen people make these. I haven't got the skill to do this. I'll, I'll readily admit that, to, to make something as nice as that I would I would love to but there we are it's supplied within this pack so that's basically the upgrades and next will be the build video so guys as I said check patreon if you want to have a look at you know the process and we'll have that video up soon for in in the meantime so until next time guys uh, take care and see you soon